Have you ever noticed how some financial analysts like to really stick their necks out with predictions, you know, making forecasts two or three years out? Yeah. And then there are others who, well, keep their cards a lot closer to their chest. As the learner, you're probably intrigued by what drives that difference. Is it just a matter of confidence or is there like a hidden strategy at play? Today, we're going on a deep dive to unpack the surprising reasons behind this behavior in finance. And spoiler alert, it goes way beyond just assuming some analysts are simply better at forecasting than others. Absolutely. We're going to explore the strategic decisions that analysts and perhaps even more importantly, their firms are making when it comes to sharing these long horizon forecasts. We really want to dig into that why. Yeah, get to the bottom of it. To guide us in our exploration, we'll be drawing insights from the research paper Long Horizon Forecasts by Beleshov and Pichiota. Really fascinating stuff. They've challenged some of the obvious assumptions and brought to light some super compelling insights. So let's jump right in. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, so when you see an analyst making a bold prediction years into the future, the first thought that might pop into your head is, are they just trying to show off? Yeah. Like, hey, look at me. I can see the future. Right. Exactly. It's almost like they're trying to signal, hey, I've got this incredible ability to see what's coming. Makes sense. So that's the classic ability signaling theory. It's all about the individual analyst building a reputation for themselves, right? Right. Exactly. But Balashoff and Pisciata's research highlights that the decision to issue these long horizon forecasts might actually be less about individual analysts trying to grandstand and more about a calculated decision by the brokerage firms themselves. Interesting. And one thing that points to this is the consistent format these forecasts are presented in within a firm, suggesting a company-wide strategy rather than just a bunch of maverick analysts going rogue. Okay, so this isn't just about one analyst thinking they've got a hot take. It's coming from a more orchestrated place. It's like a top-down directive. Interesting. So if these analysts were truly trying to demonstrate their superior forecasting skills, wouldn't you expect them to be snatched up by the biggest, most prestigious firms? Yeah, absolutely. But the research reveals a surprising twist. Analysts who make those long horizon forecasts are actually less likely to land a job at those top tier brokerages. Oh, that's really counterintuitive. It is, isn't it? So this finding really throws a wrench in the whole ability signaling theory as the main driver. It totally flips the script. So if it's not primarily about showing off their forecasting progress, then what's the real motivation here? Well, this is where we get to the heart of Balashov and Picciotta's argument, the trade-off between accuracy and publicity. Okay. Their theory is that brokerage firms are constantly weighing the fact that long-term predictions are inherently less accurate against the potential to generate publicity and attract attention. That makes sense. Predicting the distant future in finance is a pretty risky business. Oh, absolutely. But why is that publicity so crucial for these firms? Think about the competitive landscape for brokerages. Many of them rely heavily on fees they earn when clients buy and sell stocks. Right. So getting their name out there, along with their analysts' names, can attract new clients and even encourage existing ones to trade more frequently. It's all about generating that trading volume. Exactly. So putting out a long-term forecast, even if it's a bit of a gamble in terms of accuracy, can be a savvy way to grab attention and potentially drum up more business. So it's kind of like a high-risk, high-reward strategy? In a way, yes. They're willing to sacrifice a bit of accuracy for the potential of a bigger payoff in terms of publicity and clients. Exactly. It's like making a splash, getting people talking. The paper actually draws an interesting parallel to something called bold forecasts. Oh, I've heard of those. You know, those really extreme predictions that might have a lower chance of being spot on. Yeah, but they definitely get people talking. Right. They grab headlines, they stir debate. Yeah, yeah. And in a similar way, being among the first to offer a long horizon forecast can help a brokerage stand out in a crowded marketplace. Got it. 
So it's about getting in early and making a statement. Exactly. Okay, so we've got the theory, but what about the hard evidence? Does this trade-off actually play out in the real world? Let's start with accuracy, because this is crucial. Okay. The research shows these long horizon forecasts, those looking two to three years ahead, are significantly less accurate. How much less accurate are we talking? Well, on average, they're 40 to 50% less accurate compared to shorter term predictions made by the same analyst for the same company. Whoa, that's a huge difference. It is. And this isn't just some theoretical number. The market actually penalizes analysts for those inaccuracies in their long horizon forecasts. Oh, really? Yeah. Their chances of promotion can be affected. And even their job security isn't completely immune. So there's a real cost associated with that lower accuracy. Mm -hmm. It's not just a free pass to make outlandish predictions. It's a gamble with real stakes. It is. Now let's switch gears and look at the evidence for the publicity incentive. This is where the findings at the brokerage firm level get really interesting. Okay. The study discovered that analysts who work for brokerages that heavily rely on trading fees, often smaller or newer firms trying to make their mark, are significantly more likely to issue these long horizon forecasts. So their business model is directly tied to that need for publicity and client acquisition. Precisely. We're talking about a three to four percentage point increase in the likelihood of issuing those long-term forecasts. In the hyper-competitive world of finance, that's not insignificant, right? Yeah, it's a noticeable difference in strategy. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the revenue source either. The research also found that analysts at firms without those big, well-established investment banking arms, mm -hmm. or those who aren't among the like top 10 largest brokerages, are also more prone to putting out these long horizon forecasts. Makes sense. They need to find other ways to stand out. Right. They're trying to level the playing field, get noticed when they might not have the brand recognition of those giants. Here's another really interesting point to consider. Okay. The stark contrast between sell side and buy side analysts. Oh, right. Sell side analysts, the ones who are actively out there trying to attract clients to their brokerage services, are way more likely to issue those long horizon forecasts compared to their buy side counterparts. And buy side analysts are more focused on managing money for institutions. Exactly. They don't have the same need to publicly attract clients. Right. And that difference in their core need for publicity aligns perfectly with this behavior. That's a pretty compelling piece of evidence. It is, isn't it? But the research goes even deeper, exploring how those publicity incentives might vary depending on the type of companies an analyst covers. Oh, so the specific stock they're analyzing also plays a role. Exactly. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Brokerages with that strong need for publicity are actually less likely to push their analysts to issue long-horizon forecasts for companies that already have high trading volume or are followed by a ton of other analysts. So they're being strategic about where they choose to make those bold predictions. They are. It's like they're trying to maximize their impact by focusing on less crowded spaces where their early insights might carry more weight. That's a smart move. Now, here's another really intriguing finding that adds another layer to this. Okay. The difference in long horizon forecast issuance between high publicity and low publicity brokerages is even more pronounced for analysts who are highly rated, you know, the all-stars in the field. Oh, interesting. So reputation plays a role too. Absolutely. If you're a well-respected analyst working for a firm hungry for publicity, there's even greater pressure to put those long-term predictions out there. Makes sense. Your reputation adds credibility and amplifies the firm's message. Exactly. So let's talk about the real-world career implications for analysts who choose to play this publicity game with long-horizon forecasts. Yeah. What are the potential benefits and drawbacks for them? Well, the research suggests it's a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, issuing those long-term forecasts might actually slightly reduce an analyst's risk of being fired. Really? Yeah, it's thought to be because it shows a willingness to contribute to the firm's revenue goals. Like demonstrating they're actively trying to bring in more clients. Exactly. But on the flip side, it seems to make it harder for those analysts to move to more prestigious brokerages. Oh, why is that? Well, those top-tier firms likely prioritize a solid track record of accuracy and a more conservative approach over the flash of publicity-grabbing long-term predictions. So it's kind of a trade-off. You might be safer in your current job, but it could limit your upward mobility. That seems to be the case. And here's a final interesting tidbit. The market actually pays more attention to the future forecasts of analysts 
who have a history of issuing those long horizon predictions. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, so even if those early predictions aren't super accurate, they do seem to generate recognition and make investors take notice. They build a reputation for being bold and forward thinking, even if those early predictions don't always pan out. Exactly. So to wrap things up, the key takeaway here is that the decision to publicly share those long-term financial forecasts isn't simply about an analyst having some magical ability to see into the future. Right, there's a whole lot more going on behind the scenes. Exactly. The research strongly suggests that it's primarily a strategic move by brokerage firms. They're carefully weighing the potential gains in publicity, client acquisition, and trading volume against the inherent risk of lower accuracy that comes with making predictions so far out. It's like a calculated gamble. Absolutely. Now, this insight can be applied far beyond the world of finance. Think about it. How might the incentives of information providers in other fields, like media outlets, research institutions, or even tech companies, influence what and when they choose to share, even if it means compromising on accuracy or depth? It's a question worth pondering. Are they prioritizing quick headlines over in-depth analysis? Are they trying to shape public opinion rather than simply reporting the facts? Exactly. And what parallels can you draw in other areas you're curious about? Maybe healthcare, politics, or even social media. Yeah, this deep dive really gives us a framework for thinking about information revelation strategies that goes beyond just the surface level. Absolutely. It's about understanding the motivations, the pressures, and the trade-offs that shape what information gets shared and how it's presented. It's about peeling back the layers and looking at the bigger picture. Exactly. So if you're interested in exploring this further, we highly recommend checking out the original research by Balashov and Pisciata. Yeah, their paper is a real eye-opener. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the fascinating world of long horizon forecasts and the strategic decisions behind them. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep learning and keep questioning.